So, you know, I'm just at the beach trying to catch me a little ting, you know? <laughs> trying to catch some beans and some toast, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you say you're British, right? Uh, hold on. What's that right here in the distance? Is that... Is that my fellow DJs? One second, Cammy. I didn't know y'all was coming out to the beach. Hey, hey, before y'all go, before y'all go into the waters, hold on. I got something I gotta show y'all. It's a little, it's a little something to help you charge that credit card. It's your boy. Hey, <laughs> Chance. And I'm back in a good way. And I'm here to give you guys. A good little charge guide. I'm sorry for that very terrible behind pun with charging your credit card. Don't charge your credit card, please. Don't do it. It's not worth it. But here, I'm going to show you guys how to play with a charge character the best that I can know how. I'm still getting into the groove and the mixes of playing with a charge character, but I feel like I played enough to be able to actually try and guide you guys in the right direction when trying to play with a charge character, especially with DJ specifically. But as usual, don't have to keep my intros too long so you know what let's get right in it so first things first before we get into the nitty and the gritty of playing a charge character we first have to know what charging is and the different types of fighting game characters so usually in fighting games they have different types of styles to play so you have some characters that have a down forward or down back motion which is also known as quarter circle forward and quarter circle back so if you look over on the right and you look at Cammy's inputs, you can see when I do down back or quarter circle back, I get a motion. Or when I do quarter circle forward or down forward, I get another one. I don't know what the specific name for those types of characters, but that's one type that's in the game. Another type is types like Zangief, mainly grapplers, that have a I think we call it spin drive but it's like a, a 360 motion that you would input in order for a special move to come out for Zangief but then for us we have charging where you got to hold back and then push forward and push a button there's also the 2-2 motion that Chun-Li has that I know for a fact for her DP but just a down down and then a button but for us charging we have to hold back and then forward in order to get a special move. So with that being a thing, that changes up the whole game plan of how we play. With charging characters, I think the most frames that we have to hold in order to get a special move to come out is about 40. Yeah, because at 34, I didn't get anything. Yeah, about 43. Yep, 20 doesn't get anything, 30 doesn't get anything, and 40 gets it. Okay, so yeah, about 40 something frames and we'll be able to actually get a input for a special move. So now when it comes to actually getting the motion out, you would hold back, and then forward, and then a button. And since that's how we get our special moves, it's a certain way that we have to play. A little bit more extra than when it comes to the, the casual down forward, down back type of player. Where we always have to keep in mind or keep the mentality of holding back whenever we move. Which then brings me to my next point. You have to have the mentality of a charging character. This is something that I was struggling with and still kind of am, so I'm still in the midst of practicing this. Where every time you move forward, or you plan to do anything, you have to hold back. So here I'll show a couple examples. So here I could do a jump forward, and as soon as I jump forward, I'm holding down back. Now because I'm doing that, that's preparing me for anything that could come out that Cammy could do. So if I'm in the back right here, and I do a jump forward, and I'm holding down back, if she jumps, I could do a DP. If I'm at a distance and I jump forward and I'm holding down back, as soon as I land, I can throw a projectile. And this works for various things. So, 
Let me put Cammy in block right quick. So, for example, if I jump forward and I'm holding down back, I'm going to be charging while I'm in the air. And that's a benefit because as soon as I land, or before I even land, I can fall with a button. And as soon as I land, I can go into another button, whether it could be a button that's special cancelable or a different button than into a button that's special cancelable. And then after that button that's special cancelable can go into a fireball or a DP, depending on the situation. Like that. And again, the benefit for that is you'll be able to hold your charge while you're moving forward. So because you play in that type of way, it gives a kind of like uh, a little chore as we're fighting. And it only becomes a chore when we have to think about it. So the best way to overcome it is to 100% keep practicing. Every time you move, hold back. Every time your opponent comes forward, hold back. Jump forward, hold back. Dash forward, hold back. And what that will do is immediately start charging your move. So it's knowing that whenever you do movements, whether you walk forward, walk back, jump forward, or anything like that, you have to hold down back or just neutral back in order to get your charge. You can also do that when it comes to waking up. So whenever you do a move, and your opponent doesn't move right after and catches you with it, you can hold down back. Just to hold that charge while going through their animation. And with that, you can wake up and do a DP. And now, the next thing that I want to explain is conditioning. So, before I get into explaining how conditioning works I can explain what conditioning is so conditioning is basically repeating a certain move or repeating certain things to your opponent so they believe that you're always going to be doing it and that you trick them later on into doing something else to fall for whatever it is you're conditioning them for so when it comes to conditioning everybody has their different types so conditioning can be something as small as doing a move and then one move after. For example, DJ, I could do standing medium into standing medium. And what that will do is that if I do that throughout the duration of the match, probably like two or three times every time my opponent sees me do a stand medium punch, they're gonna see another stand medium punch come out so with that being a thing the fourth time that I do stand medium punch I can go into like a stand light kick or I can go into a stand light punch or something that's gonna be a little faster that I'll be able to capitalize off of because my opponent thinks oh you're gonna do another stand medium I should be able to try and interrupt that but then we'll run into a frame trap which then can result in a little route that you can do. Or you can condition with special moves to try and make something a little bigger. So another way of conditioning could be spamming fireballs across the map. And this one will be DJ specific since you have a, a feint that you can do where if you spam a couple of fireballs and your opponent's like, you know, I'm getting real tired of holding block or doing parry and I want to get in and actually do something. It's basically wearing down the patience of your opponent. And what will end up happening is that they're trying to start to find methods to get in to get past that projectile. So what you can do is that after doing a couple projectiles, after you see that they're getting a little antsy, you can throw a feint. And go into whatever it is that you see as a response to what they do. So if they jump forward and they're a little close to you. And they try to jump forward and get a hit. After you do your feint. As you can see from my inputs. You can start charging immediately after. So when they jump forward. You can meet them in the air. With a DP. Preferably a heavy DP. 
<laughs> because heavy DPS head involved. Or you could press a button. And that's going to be my next thing to explain. The next little segue to get into, or I should say that was a segue to get into, is knowing when to do a DP or a regular anti air button. So, of course, as we know, when it comes to DPing, they have to charge it. The bad thing about that is that if your opponent jumps forward and presses a button, as you're charging down, you're susceptible to getting hit in the head and getting opened up with an overhead. So with that being a thing, this is where you judge distance. So right from where I am now, if Cammy would have jumped forward, I'd be fine staying where I am. She can't jump forward far enough to actually hit me with anything. But if we were this close and she would have jumped forward, it might not be a good thing to do a DP or try and go for a DP. You can still hold down back just in case. But if she gets real close and you think that you're not going to have a charge in enough time, you can do back for back HK. Me trying to say back for HK. Jeez. So as an example, uh, let me see if I have her set up to do that. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I have her going on for a little bit. Let's see if I can demonstrate to you. So if I were to do like a faint. Oh, this is exactly why I say do uh, the heavy version. Then I'd be able to get a DP if she's high enough in the air. But if not, and I do a faint and she actually jumps forward before, I could hit her with a back. I'm here, here I go again. A back 4 HK. <laughs> a back HK. But the thing about back HK is you have to have the timing for it. It's pretty quick, but it's pretty high and it goes forward a bit. So if you do it a little early, that's fine. You can also do that, which is a crouching HK. And what that can lead into is something a little better, which is that. Since you're already holding down, you can anti-air with DJ's crouching HK and as you get the hit, you can do the heavy version of the up kicks. Just like that. Alright, let me check if my cami is on throw still. Awesome, wake up throw. Alright, so the next one I want to show you and these are little tidbits or examples of what you can do the next time that you want to get into a match. And this one is to show how you can charge while going for a meaty. Or the other way around, going for a meaty and charge. So let's say, what's a good meaty timing? A good meaty button is crouching MP. Oh, I got one. All right. So a good one that you can do throw let me see if I remember the timing for this one hold on okay so let's see if I can get a timing for this one this is one I've been practicing for a little bit let's see nope this one's a little tricky so as you can see after I finally got it is that I was able to get a throw into a DR into a meaty 2 MP while still holding down back and off of that I can get something better than anything when it comes to actually charging because off of 2 MP you can get EX just cool but that's just an example to show that when you DR you can still hold down back to charge. So if you want to keep up pressure, you can. Right? So let's say like you're in a corner and you want to keep up pressure. And you do like, let's say, 
We'll do like some light, light punches and light kicks and such. While holding down back, you can get your EX Slasher. And this last thing that I'm going to show you is something I plan on using in another video later on down the line. But for right now, I think it fits the example that I want to show. So what I'm going to demonstrate is when someone's in burnout and you want to keep the pressure up, this is a very good benefit of being able to actually charge while pressing buttons. This is a little burnout route that I seen from a top player, a top DJ player, but I don't remember the name of the person. If I ever find out, I'll put their name in the subtitles or captions. And with that, if you have your timing right to charge your moves during each hit, you'll be able to keep up enough pressure during burnout that you'll be able to drop your opponent's health down and also get something after before they recover from burnout. Alright, and with that, I think that's pretty much everything that I have so far when it comes to charge characters. Of course, like usual, if I ever learn any more or anything new, I'll definitely put it into a guide to let you guys know about. Like, I'm very aware of a thing that used to be in, like, the older Street Fighters called Charge Partitioning, but I don't know if that's in this game. If it is, I'll be sure to explain Charge Partitioning and let you guys know on how to do it. But regardless, if you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and drop a like. If you want to see more, more guides, more DJ stuff, more DJ analysis, and even battles with me going against other people, go ahead and drop a subscribe. Drop in the comments if there's anything that you would want to know about charging that wasn't covered in this video. And if there's anything that you guys know, go ahead and feel free to drop that knowledge into the comment section. And of course, like usual, be sure to share with your friends and your family them. Let them know that Jay Jensei is out here trying to be the best DJ that he can be. And I'll see you DJs in the next one. Deuces. So like I was saying about my beans and your toast.